Good morning. Welcome to American Truck Simulator. Welcome to Los Angeles. Let's uh, let's go ahead and um, let's take a quick look here. So what are we in today? Well, if you can see that, and maybe you can't, that is a Mac Anthem. That's the uh, smaller sleeper. I think it's the 40, 42 inch model. I don't have that much time with the Mac Anthem. Uh, that's a little clicky if I do that. So uh, I decided I would take it for a bit of a spin. We've got a trip lined up today. We're going to use the uh, California Coastal Highway or kind of the Coastal Highway as close as we can get. Because um, it's been a while since I've done this trip and it's been a while since I've used uh, the, the Mac Anthem. Let's go ahead and jump in it. Ready to roll. Let's fire it up. Okay. Let's get some lights on. Let me see. 504, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I have not exactly got great mileage, but I only just jumped into the to the truck. Um, let's just check everything is good. The mirrors should be fine. Now, I say that. There's a caveat that I'll come to in just a second. Yeah, we should be good to go. Now, you might remember this motel, it's the one that uh, I let Sandy commentate on. So I'm sure that she'll think it's dodgy, but uh, she's not here right now, so that's okay. So straight away, oh, that cruise ship's back. The first issue with the uh, the Mac Anthem is um, visibility and, uh, and the mirrors. So I look left, there's this honking great big mirror in the way. I look right, it's a little different, but I can't see the mirror when I'm looking dead ahead. So um, thankfully I've got those little hood mirrors. Oh, this isn't going to be easy to get out of. I think we should be okay. Yeah, it's going to go for it. Well, the Anthem has been, was for a long time, one of my favorite trucks. There's a few reasons for that. I, yes, yes, sir. I think I have the British voice on today. I like um, the sound it makes. I like the engine range. They seem to perform more than you would expect, given the fairly limited power. I can go straight ahead here. Or I gotta go left. Okay. Oh, got a green light. That's good. Efficiency is pretty good as well. I guess I haven't got a green light anymore. Or maybe I do, maybe I don't. I do. Oh, I see. Yeah, now I've got a red light. Can I get anywhere? No, I've got to go left here. Okay. Well, let's tell people I'm turning left. Let's put the parking brake on. All right, so I've got to go a fair distance to get my cargo. I could take the long way round, but I don't really want to. Oh, numpty at the wheel. I'm just going to go. Excuse me, Mustang. That was probably my fault. If we add casual, maybe we won't get busted for it. Actually, we didn't get busted for it, so... He must have thought it was his fault too. That works. So what have we got today under the hood? We have the MP8. I don't often take the MP8 out for a, a spin. I've not tended to find it that much more different to the MP7. That's the smaller version. And it's it's not a big engine. It's a 12.8 liter. So like a mid-size. The MP7 is the 11 liter model. And the MP10, which isn't in the standard game, is the 16 liter. Anyway, this particular engine I'm using is the uh, 445 horsepower. So not that many horses under the bonnet, or under the hood. In fact, it's the same as, uh, as mid-range-ish Packer MX-13. But the difference is this engine has 1860 foot pounds of torque. The MX 13 with 430 horsepower 
Okay, it's a little less than the um, 445. That's 15 50 foot pounds of torque. If you go up to the MX uh, 13 with uh, 455 horsepower, you get a boost to 16 50 foot pounds. This thing has a big torque advantage. Well, what does that mean? Well, theoretically, gosh, I'm not driving very smoothly here. Theoretically, it gives it great uh, flexibility and I can haul loads up hills without having to worry too much about it. Now, in practice, generally it's it's okay. It's not a powerhouse. I don't expect it to be. But it seems to be that that approach to engines is what gives uh, the Mack trucks their efficiency. Okay. Yeah, I do feel like I'm sitting very close to the steering wheel right now. I'm also using M drive. That's uh, Max equivalent of Volvo's I shift. That's an automated transmission that has a good reputation in the industry, at least in terms of how it drives. As I understand, disclaimer, not a truck driver. But in the game, it works great. Let's negotiate around here. That bad to get where we need to be. Okay, there's my cargo. So in the game, it works great, and I'm using the uh, the overdrive version of it. So it's not especially tall. Uh, it's something like 70 miles an hour at 1500 RPM. I'll not be able to go that fast. This is a world of trucks trip, but it helps. Um, all 12 gears stacked um, very very well okay let's just negotiate around here you know what since we've got some daylight let's um, switch to external view so you can look at this uh, uh, rather grey rather boring fleet spec truck so we've got the, the what they call the duty or duty mirrors and air intakes and bumpers or fenders and, and uh, clasps and catches I think that's probably it there we go I do have however the gold bulldog on the front now that's because um, this bad boy has full Mac engine and transmission so but it is finished in what I want to call pavement grey and I'm using steel wheels. So it's not a very exciting truck to look at. Kind of matches the, the trailer which is nice. Um, one concession to, uh, to luxury is there is the single exhaust stack. I didn't go with two because I just didn't feel like two. And I didn't go with the bottom exhaust which the, the standard model has. Now just make sure I'm not going to run into this wall. Nope, it's all good. I'm going to jump back into the cabin. Let's get the windows down. Cheers, Gov. Don't think he's interested, really. Not really close to there, but we didn't strike it. Let's see if we can miss the curb. Yep, we missed the curb looking at the hood mirror. All right. The sun's come out. Let's put a turn left. Let's go ahead and get these windows up. So it's almost 7 a.m. and we're starting off. Wow, this is quiet. Shouldn't say the Q word. I work in IT in a professional capacity and you try not to say it's quiet because that's when you get a disaster happening. But so far. All good. Let's watch out for this Peterbilt 389 on the left. Thank you. Sorry, Gavin. Thank you. Okay. Let's go. Let's get up to cruise. Oh, don't even need to merge. What do you know? Okay. 
So it's it's handling the acceleration thing just great. We'll be in top in just a second. It says, but there's a hill here, so uh, going to merge left. I don't need to sleep right now. I've done enough sleeping. So as I was saying, the visibility to the mirror is uh, not my favourite part of the Mac. The the hood mirrors help an awful lot. They're actually really good in this uh, in this particular truck. So I appreciate that. I like the sound. The dashboard can be a little hard to see if you turn off the lights. So um, oh, we're actually gaining speed. This is not good. It's just the engine brake. Just try and keep the speed down. It's forcibly downshift. That's kind of helping. Okay. Let's pop cruise back up to 55. Okay, so when it gets a little brighter, it's 7.30, maybe about 8am, 8, 8 if I remember, I will uh, go ahead and turn off the lights and see if I can use the dashboard. So what am I expecting today? At this rate, a pretty easy trip. The weather's looking good, got a full tank of diesel, got plenty of power and torque, the cargo's not even that heavy, it's 33,000 pounds, easy going. Mileage wise, I think I should do pretty good. I'm hoping for about 7 to the gallon. That's sticking to California speed limit, which is 55. If we run late, maybe we'll lose a bit more fuel. Let's just check how, uh, how much time it thinks it's going to take me to run this trip. Six hours. Sunday as well, so that probably helps the traffic. And I have 11 hours of time to do it, so. Yeah, no, no need to to go anywhere remotely fast. It's not even 300 miles. Was it even worth getting out of bed really early on a Sunday? Yes, of course it was. A paycheck is a paycheck. Let's turn that off. There we go. And that's kind of it. That's that's where we're at. And I probably could at this point stop and uh, have a fairly boring trip but um, we'll see don't want to subject everyone to watching me drive in California for a five hours of game time I don't know well I think it's time to use a bit of bullet time so I'm going to go ahead and do this the slow way, but if you're watching this video, oh, I'm speeding, lol, I wasn't paying attention. Are these pipes? I guess they are, or a pipe, is it a rail, railroad, railway line? Hmm. It looked like a refinery of some sort on the right that we passed, so I don't know what that was. Maybe I won't use bullet time after all. Maybe you can just stick around for the trip. So it's not going to switch up to top gear. Oh, I did there. So it won't switch up to top gear at 50. It waited till we went up the hill, down the hill a little bit and picked up speed. Yep, there's the Pacific Ocean. if I cruise along at 50 I'm going to get much better or slightly better mileage if I do 55. I might just do that. Well, first things first, let me go ahead and turn off the lights. So I can kind of still see my instruments but the speedometer is a little hard to see. Yeah, I think I'm going to put the, the secondary lights on once I get to a straight bit. There we go. Let's tap cruise up to 55. So I'm using the premium interior. That's the only one that gives me the, the built-in navigation on the, the, the middle length model. But it also gives me an extra cluster of gauges on the right-hand side. So we have what looks like oil temperature as the first one. I 
think the next one is that brake temperature or is that oil temperature or something? I'm not sure what that is. Hmm. Next one along is I believe exhaust temperature. And finally, we've got uh, how much brakes are in use. So if I were to tap on the brakes, and I'm not going to because I don't need to, I'm going up a hill for goodness sake, I don't want to slow down. It shows that, that that thing moves a little bit. The Mac also has an interesting dashboard design anyway. If we look along the bottom, under the rev counter, we've got coolant, looks like oil pressure's next. Next to that, is that DEF, diesel exhaust fluid? I think so. And on the other side, under speedometer, we've got uh, looks like fuel and the two air tank pressure gauges. And I'm picking up speed again. Excuse the engine brake. This transmission doesn't have a retarder, which is my bad. Didn't think I'd need one with uh, 33,000 pounds of uh, cargo, but I was wrong. Still picking up speed. So what I do is I tap cruise down to, uh, to 50 turn on the uh, engine brake it, it set up the game to allow us six mile per hour over speed so I've got to tap it down if we want to keep it close to 55 otherwise it will let me reach 61 which will get me a speeding ticket and with this being California you're gonna get a speeding ticket a lot of the time if you speed some of that is challenge accepted though maybe not today Quick check of how far we've gone. Yep. Still reckons we're going to get there at uh, 1.30. And um, it's 200 miles now. So we've done 80 miles since my last check. We can use lane number one. Mileage is just under seven, so that's good. Time for a sip of, well, today isn't, an, isn't tea. It's more of an energy drink. Whoa. Okay. Sip of an energy drink then. I wonder what sort of mileage I could get if I drove this very carefully. Or conversely, what sort of mileage would I get if I drove this like a nutter? Oi! Nah! Bonus points if you get the reference to that. More energy drink required. There's the ocean again. Let's take a quick look left. Oh, I can't look so much left though. Don't want to run off the road. Which would be very amusing. Not the first time I've done that, but not really what I want to do. Let's see if I can monitor the exhaust uh, temperature. So let me see. It's down to 600. Whoa. That may not be exhaust temperature. That might be something else. But as I understand, if you have higher revs, the exhaust temperature drops because even though you're burning more fuel, it's leaving the exhaust quicker. Let me know in the comments if that is completely wrong. But it means if I climb a hill and I'm able to use, let's say, 1200 revs as opposed to 1500 revs, my temperature goes up. Well, I suppose I'm still burning as much fuel if it can still produce as, no, as much torque or power as I need. So yes, it would do this. The gas is leaving slower more time for it to leave its heat in the exhaust system. Can I view it here? So it's gone up a little bit. It's going up as I go up the hill. And then when I lift off, or it lifts off for me, it's dropping. Okay, that's fair enough. Back on the power in a second once we reach 55. There we go. 
It's still showing 600. Hmm. Now it's going up. I wonder. It may not be modeled so well in the simulation, but I'm guessing that that's, that's 800 right now. Still going up. Still climbing pretty quickly as well. My theory was, or my, what I was wondering was, if it was not modeled in the game, just how, how however much load you've got depends on the temperature, but my engine revs were dropping and the temperature was going up. So maybe it is modelled. Hmm. Read online horror stories of um, in, in Caterpillar engine trucks of, of old people having to, or drivers having to not go up the hill as quickly as they could in as tall a gear as they could because the exhaust temperature is getting too high. Not something we have to worry about in this game. And it's not going on how the truck seems to behave. It's about down to 600, if not a little lower. I never paid that much attention to it, to be fair. Maybe I should have. Well, I'm going to have to steer a bit more. I'm sure so it might not be such an opportunity to stare at the gauge but that's pretty yeah that's that's very pretty I kind of want to look it's been at least a, a, a minute yeah it's still low huh well, when I find a hill, if I'm able to go up in a in a high gear, I will uh, see if I can re remember to take a look. I've just gone at 11 in the game, which means I'm two and a half hours out. This has been utterly uneventful so far. This is a it's a fleet truck. It's just effortless. not even, well, it's not a bad colour, it's just not very exciting. I suppose what more do you need really? If you just want to efficiently transport goods to and from point A to point B, you don't need it to look like it's on fire while doing so, it's just nice if it does. And you could do that with this, with the Mac if you really wanted to. Plus you can cover it in chrome, give it custom wheels, paint job, some chromey shiny bits. You can't give it much more power and stock in the game, but you don't really need to most of the time. Bit of a haze on the horizon. I wonder if that's rain. I don't think so. It's California, so that might be smog, but we're not in Los Angeles, so I don't think it would be. Still cruising 600 degrees on the exhaust temperature. So this is a field of dead vegetation. What is that? Hmm. I'm not sure what, what that is or what that was. That brown vegetation stuff. I've seen a palm tree for a while though. So I guess we're not in Los Angeles anymore. Or Vegas. What's this on the right? It's rock. Okay, looks a bit like a monkey's head. So do I have an external temperature gauge on my dashboard? Let me see. Oh, I guess I do. Um, so next to the time, it says 11.52, it says 88. I'm guessing that's outside temperature. What else have we got? Air pressure, trip computer. Okay. 194 gallons left. of average 7.7. .7. That's good going. 
Six hours, almost so seven hours driving though. Okay. Right. My engine load is pretty low, which is good because I'm cruising. No notices. Okay. And there are my headline stats. My battery voltage. Should I need it? Which you generally don't. Unless you broke your truck. And if you have broken your truck, you can't see this on the dashboard. Mileage of my current speed. Almost 320,000 miles on this trip, but most of that's been with an AI driver, though. Let's go back to my favourite screen, which is this one here. Because it kind of avoids me having to look at my fuel gauge so much, which is a little subtle in this uh, in this truck. But with 1,400 miles left to go, I don't have to worry about that today. Yes, sir, uh, going straight on. So, so far it's gotten better mileage than I hoped, but we haven't yet made it to uh, a destination city and it'll probably drop then. And a lot of this has just been ambling along in top gear. And as we've just seen, half engine load. to go up a hill here I wonder it's like we're currently descending look at the dashboard there's that little green dot that shows the instantaneous mileage and that's now dropping as we go up a hill it's saying 50 so let's tap down and I'm going to watch the exhaust ga gas temperature as we go up the hill if I can yeah it shifted down okay It's still using 1200 revs, but it did shift down, so um, somehow using M drive in manual mode seems a little silly. I'm going to keep it in at 50 for this. Uh, whoa, we're leaving so soon? Okay. So I'm going to keep it in that gear and speed, but we're turning off anyway, so. engine brake. Bit of traffic from the left. Nothing from the right that I can see. He's turning off. Okay, that works for me. Nice and quiet. Let's watch the trailer as I leave with the big mirror. Ah, easy done. Not working this thing particularly hard to get up to speed. Let's tap 30 on cruise control and we're at Santa Cruz already. So fantastic. That's a really straightforward trip, but as you see, seven and a half to the gallon now. So it did drop a little bit. That's okay. I expected that. So allegedly, this is the British accent I'm listening to in the navigation, but I am not so convinced. Let's try and take this nice and tight. Without going over the curb, and I think I managed it. Yep. All right. That doesn't look suspicious, does it? Yeah, good grief. Let's just coast around this corner. Is this the wall boat on the right? Yeah, it looks like it. It's a wall boat on the right, just up here. Just where I have to turn right. I may go back to using the real company's mod because that, that was kind of quite, that was a lot of fun. Sometimes. Too many McDonald's trucks though. Turn right. 
how many brake lights does this Camaro have in front of me? More than two, that, that's for sure. forward approach there but I think I'm good to go yeah I think so okay let's get a bit of power on I'm gonna use the left hand lane that switch to my wheel cam view look at those delightful steel wheels you know what they're not so bad coast down this hill got a red light so Give it a bit of service break here. Oh, I guess this is my left turn then, so let's use my left indicator like so. Well, I won't get through on this light and possibly not even the next. That's alright. Okay, I'm gonna jump back in the cabin. So, is this our go now? Nope, not yet. But soon though. My indicator turned off, what do you know? I don't think we'll get through on the next filter light, which has just gone green now, but we might. You usually don't get through on such a short light yeah there you go and now in Texas the another couple of cars would have gone through because that's what they do over here uh, I'm shaking my head at the fact that that happens I don't know why because it just does yeah I'm in everyone's way I'm looking an inch forward just a little bit let me see like running into this guy in that Jeep I got pretty close I don't think I did. No. It might be, be a girl, I can't really tell. Let's see if we can get through on this one. Alright, cabin view time. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to go. That cop might give me a ticket, but he didn't. Okay, success. The best thing I've taken from this trip so far is how utterly effortless this truck is and I didn't get a ticket from a police officer who was waiting at the light. I think that that's a nice little result. But I wonder if my next trip should be coming back the same way, but at higher speed. Well, we'll see. Anyway, that's just about wraps it up for this particular video. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Go ahead and click like if you've enjoyed this. If you haven't, that's okay. It's a pretty staid, boring trip, but sometimes that's just what you want if you want to relax. If you're at all interested in the numbers, that was seven and a half to the gallon. I'm very happy with that. That was a that's a nice little result. Well, all that remains is for me to say thank you so much. Goodbye.